In this video, I ask a bunch of pro painters your questions at Adepticon. So I'm back and mostly recovered from Adepticon 2017 in Schaumburg, Illinois. It was uh, 23rd to the 26th of March, so this is about a week since uh, uh, you know since I've been there. But um, one of the things I did at Adepticon, I did a lot of things at Adepticon. I met a lot of you uh, and uh, and and shook hands and took pictures and said hi and chatted and stuff like that, and it was great. Um, but one of the projects I really wanted to get done this year at Adepticon was I wanted to talk to a bunch of pro painters, people who are, you know, Crystal Brush winners, Golden Demon winners, commission painters, people who are entering Crystal Brush, all that kind of stuff. I wanted to talk to a bunch of them, and I wanted to ask them all the same questions. So I thought five questions seemed pretty good, and I was going to come up with those questions, uh, really kind of aiming a little bit more towards how they went from beginner status to like the next level, or they want to call it, you know, I don't know, intermediate or whatever. But then I thought to myself, you know what I should do is I should ask my patrons, the people who support me on the uh, Patreon, which you can check out. Pachow. So I, before leaving and going to, to Adepticon, I asked the patrons and I said, hey, you know, um, what are some questions that you'd like to ask pro painters about how they got from, you know, beginner status to the next level, to intermediate, to whatever you want to call it. So I got tons and tons of responses from those people, which was awesome. And uh, I took five of those, the, the five questions that I thought would work best. And then I added in a sixth question of my own. And then, um, well, here you go. Start sooner. I would never, ever try the suggestion of mixing water with black paint as a way to shade your miniatures. That was such a horrible mistake. I did some bright red colors and some, you know, beautiful exotic feathers on some models, and I went, I could shade these with a black wash, and it just made it all muddy and dirty, and I was, I was like, never again. That was long before they had the, uh, the washes that they have now. Definitely would have kept a log of the colors and things that I, I, I used, what kind of paints I had used. Um, you know, would have definitely kept better record keeping of what I had done. And really that's about it, because oftentimes, you know, we, we just forget, you know, and so like we, we accomplish a certain effect and, you know, it's like, oh, how did I do that? Or I got a certain color and I mixed it. And, just, just don't quite remember. So, good record keeping of what we, of what paints we had used, like what kind of techniques we're doing, and you know, I think really it's just being very conscious of, of what we're doing is really kind of what separates you know your, your your first entry into just grabbing the paint from the bottle and applying it, right? But instead, when we're mixing particular colors and we're using inks and mixing those in, and you know. Just all those kind of things. It's just keeping a record of what we had done. Tutorials. This is it's the information age. Uh, every, so many artists put out tutorials. Watch them all, all of them, even when they contradict. The thing I would say to myself is to not try and immediately emulate um, painters and try and find my own way of painting. I'd watch more YouTube because there's a bunch of amazing painters sharing incredible stuff just for free. It's all out there. You can learn every technique. I would also say compete earlier and more often. I think it's something that scares new painters. They don't want to compete because they see really high-end stuff. Don't be afraid. Compete and have the judges give you very focused, you know, very precise feedback on what you're doing wrong. Nothing will make you advance faster than competing. Period. It's why it's what you do in the war game itself. You go to a tournament to compete so you get better. Same thing with painting. Probably ask for even more feedback and I would take a lot more of the feedback that I got to heart versus just being hard and fast in some of my things. There were things I should have been more flexible with. But yeah, I should probably listen to more feedback. Probably should ask for more feedback. I would not try to use artist acrylic paint and go shell out for real miniature paint. That was a hard lesson that took us almost half a year to learn. Just buy regular miniature paint. You will be happier if you do so. No, they don't. The, the, I have often said it many times, it, it's not in the materials that makes great painting, it's the artist himself. 
And once it starts really becoming a true, like developing the mindset of being an artist, whatever material, because I've seen people use craft paints and they produce phenomenal pieces, and I've seen people who use pro level stuff and it's mediocre, you know? Actually, sometimes I think they get in your way. I've been doing this 17 years. I use brushes that cost about 30 cents a piece. And to me, I like them better. I also don't have to worry if I destroy them. What if I get super glue in my brush, it costs me 30 cents, chuck it in the garbage. Absolutely. Um, I went from uh, painting with very low quality brushes uh, from like Walmart and using apple barrel paints. And the second that I spent just a little bit of money, uh, my uh, skill and ability and uh, the, 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 I guess the ability to control the paint increased exponentially. So it's worth it. Monetary investment is necessary. Uh, yes, sure, but they're not essential, nor are they for everything. Um, you don't buy a Mercedes as your first car when you're 16. You shouldn't buy a set of really super nice brushes when you start out. But shortly afterward, you should try to get some decent brushes. You can get like a good scarf for six bucks. You can get a good Winsor Newton for 12 or 13 on Amazon. Just get one. Give it a shot. Learn how it's different. Like paints, whatever. Just find, try. It's not that it's not about getting high-end paints. It's about trying different paints. Try Scale 75. Try War Colors. Try GW. Try Vallejo. Because they're all different and you don't know which one actually matches your paint style until you try it and figure out what has the consistency you like and so on and so forth. So just try crap. It's not about getting something high-end, it's just about trying different stuff. Yes, but I like to believe there's a correct tool for every job and some, some jobs don't require the high quality brushes. I use a lot of like cheap brushes from Hobby Lobby or Dress Barn or wherever you get your, your brushes at. But uh, yeah, definitely have some, some Raphaels and some Windsors in your collection. But try, I would say, use larger brushes, larger than you would think. You're painting a miniature, but actually, use the, you could use the tip of the brush, there's a deeper reservoir. I could go on, but yeah. I never had high quality brushes when I was beginning, so... And I still really don't. I have, I have a Series 7 Winsor Newton, but I never use it. I prefer the Winsor Newton Cotman, which is a synthetic series. Uh, because I like to rinse, I like to wash my brushes out with rubbing alcohol, and with the synthetic brushes, you can get all the dried paint in the ferrule. And when you get super glue on the tip of your brush, because you accidentally do that from time to time, you don't have to throw your brush away. You just soak it a little bit in the rubbing alcohol. You can just you know work the the bristles, and super glue comes right out. I think they make all the difference. Um, I would say as soon as you move into higher quality paints and brushes, you have a much easier time getting your blends accurate, learning better technique, learning better, like I would say, higher skills. Uh, getting to a wet palette, I think, is critical. Absolutely critical. As a matter of fact, I do, and I think it's more important. Because, for example, like a James Wapple could probably create a masterpiece out of toothpicks. All right. Um, but when you're new, fighting a bad brush is the last thing you need. Working a deadline actually helped me because I had to work fast no matter what I was doing. If I was doing one thing, I had to do it faster. If I was doing, you know, like a Blood Bowl team or an uh, army squad, I had, to, I had to do it faster. And it's actually the fastness that, that helps you kind of lose that I'm overthinking every single step of the way. If you know you only have an hour or two hours to work on a model, I have a friend who actually, you know, challenges herself. I have, I'm going to spend two hours on this model from start to finish and she's learned so much, she's improved a ton since she started. Honestly looking at models that I thought were amazing and trying to paint to that standard so it probably I will answer and say slower, slower, fewer models and slower to get it to a quality that I knew was acceptable. Practice, practice, practice and that means high volume. I uh, started with Blood Bowl teams which meant at least 20 guys as far as fans. So I, I would say start with armies, teams, whatever, groups of figure because you'll also learn how to be consistent from one to the next. Trick question, both. 
because I don't know I just you learn the basics doing the the troops and then you you take the basics further by doing high quality singles I'd okay so to really answer your question doing the slower higher quality of course thinking harder about your paint you're gonna come out with a better result great question actually it's a few models um, my years and years decades of playing GW games while wow, a lot of fun uh, didn't help me learn to paint at all because it, need the next one, next one, next one. Uh, I switched over to a game called Confrontation for a while, where you, you had like six to ten models in your force, and that's where I learned NMM, that's where I learned blending. I learned all of that because I had the time. Definitely working uh, slow and uh, concentrating on one model at a time. Uh, if you are working in batch for me, you don't get the opportunity to uh, enjoy one figure at a time and explore all of its uh, volumes and definitions and shapes. Uh, so I've always been much more of a single miniature at a time than a batch painter. Okay, so I definitely went the route of doing a lot of models quickly. And here is the number one thing I will say. I have heard new to intermediate painters say, I really work hard on it trying to make it perfect. No, you don't. Like, you, you, what you do is take a lot of time, probably, that you're wasting. That's gonna sound harsh, but you cannot paint a perfect model. Most high-end painters who've been in this game for 20 years can't paint a perfect model. I can't paint a perfect model, okay? And, and, and I have much less experience than those people. Perfect is never the goal. Perfect becomes the enemy of the good. Try to do one new thing. Try a new type of shading, a new type of highlighting, a new technique, pick a thing. Do a unit, focus on that one thing. Finish that unit, feel the overwhelming sense of satisfaction that you have done that thing. Drink deeply of that wonderful sense of, of completion and that will inspire you to go try another thing. Take a different thing, do it on the next unit. Rinse, repeat. You will eventually master many techniques and then you can sit down and luxuriate and get your fingers all pruny in a single model and have it really pay off. What helped my technique and everything like that was, uh, I guess it would be higher volume, but under a deadline. Uh, sort of like a commission painter. I've done commission painting in the past, but really uh, the deadline, working under a deadline. You know, five o'clock at the end of the day, got to have that done. And so perfecting my technique so that I can co complete something efficiently as possible is really what sped along my, my technique and, you know, wanting to learn more so that I could get more efficient. That is the hardest thing to understand. I was a trained artist. I went to art school for four years and I still didn't quite grasp color theory. I tried to translate it for people. That's how I even threw this on the blog. You have to kind of analyze that it's not just lights and darks. It's yellow versus purple, red versus green. That's another kind of contrast. That's hard for people to understand. Pretty much the only way to learn it is to try it, screw up, learn from the screw ups, and go from there. Very important. That's like day one of any uh, art school or, I don't know, yeah, ingrain that into yourself. It's very important. Colors make the world go round. How important is color theory for a beginner? critical. Do understand it. Understand it well and early and immediately. There are a hundred good videos on it. It takes five minutes to learn. You don't need to know the science behind it. Just understand what a complementary color is, what how to create like three color tri-complementary split schemes. Very basic stuff. Get what the color wheel looks like, understand what tint and shade is, and understand saturation sort of. Just basics. Again, you can do this in 10 minutes. Do it. Because otherwise, you will, you're, you'll paint your miniatures, they will look bad, and you won't know why. <laughs> this is the thing that tells you, when you see a mini and you're like, why do those colors look so nice? It's because that person understands just the basics of color theory. It'll do a ton for you. Not important at all. Do not, uh, do not waste your time studying books on color theory. Um, you will be able to learn that as you go, and if you paint a model and you go, man, that red and that blue look awful together, then you've learned something about color theory, and that's all you need.
I don't know, everybody always told me that all my clothes clash all the time, so I've never really had a good sense of, of color. But, you know, you learn the color wheel pretty early on. You have, you have your main, everybody knows you have your main primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And then when you mix those together, you get your secondary colors. And then if you put them in the color wheel, you have your complementary colors or the opposite colors, like the complementary of yellow is purple. And when you mix those two together, you actually get a pretty nice brown. Uh, but that's the basic, and I think that does help. But getting into all these other crazy uh, color theory things doesn't matter so much when you're first getting into it. Really, you're just trying to, to lay down a base coat and maybe learn some shading and highlighting. Contrast is probably the most important thing for a beginner. I would say they really should familiarize themselves with it, that it is something there, and as they develop, they know where to go back to and so that they can continue to expand upon because color theory is, you know, you learn about it in high school, but really in college, it has like in many layers to it. It's a college level type uh, subject matter. And so you can go on and there's many, 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 many books on it. So, you know, again, learning about it early on, but understanding that once they start getting more and more proficient in you know, how they're using color, that they understand the true meaning behind using those colors next to each other and why there's certain combos work. Vital. Absolutely vital. Uh, composition on a piece should be the same, you should get the same kind of attention as if you're creating a painting, including the base. So color theory is going to help you create those kind of balances. I've seen the best painters in the world struggle with composition and color. So. And I'm not saying I'm awesome at it. Uh, I would say look at pieces that people tell you are compositionally on and have amazing colors and ask a lot of questions about those pieces to try to understand what it is and why, where you can pull it into your pieces. No professional painter's word is canon. None of us are 100% correct for what you as a painter will find that you love to do. You have to find your own journey and find your own brush and find your own paint. You cannot buy the same paints as me and the same brushes as me and paint like I do. You have to discover that on your own. So you can't go verbatim and do what someone else has done. You have to find it on your own. Well, the first one you always hear is thin your paints. That is absolutely correct. Um, if I were gonna say anything, I would say that piece of advice is just not accurate enough. Whatever you think you're thinning it uh, to, it's not enough. Thin it more. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of fake news out there. I'd like a lot of people think that an airbrush is going to solve all your problems. It's not. There's there's really no uh, no shortcut to to practicing. You know, it's going to take a certain amount of hours to become good at something. You got to do the time. There there is no secret weapon that you're going to. Well, that seems like a weird pun. I like Justin, but uh, there is no like secret word that is going to make you instantly better at painting. It's just honest hard work, practice. For me, using black primer. As, as a color of primer was is a mistake. Like people always say use black primer. I prefer white or gray. To me, to me gray is more valuable than a black or a white because you can work up and down from gray instead of always constantly working down in contrast from white or trying to trying to get your colors to be brighter over a black when when all the color pigments are slightly translucent, so you're always going to, you know, get that black coming through and dulling down the colors. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, dry brushing does solves all problems. <laughs> yes, here it is. You ready? That there is a right way to paint something. The worst advice that, that I see a lot of new painters get is that there is a that there is a perfect way to achieve something. There's not. Whether it's a smooth blend or a particular highlight or a particular combination of colors or a measure a method of basing or whatever, there are very few truly right answers in this game. 
there are lots of different roads that all get you to the end path. And the key is to try all those roads. I'll just very quickly, like let's say you want to achieve smooth blends. Well, maybe something like glazing is right for you. Maybe wet blending is right for you. Maybe loaded brush is right for you. Maybe some combination of those is right for you. Try a bunch of different stuff and figure out which one is right for you because in the end, that's the worst thing that can happen is somebody gets locked into like, this is the way and the truth and the dictum and you must do this if you want to succeed. No, that's garbage. Lots of people have lots of different ways they do it. Find your happy path. The importance of what materials are using, like certain brushes, you know. Um, I mean, I even I'm guilty of, you know, uh, favoring uh, bristle brushes over synthetics, uh, you know, but I mean, like, really that advice is, is not terribly good advice, it's just my personal opinion, you know, um, so really it's, you know, it's really kind of, you know, trying to help people navigate this ocean of information that's coming their way, and so, yeah, that's, that's really a tough one. I'm... I think it's just, you know, false, not false information, but just not pertinent information to a beginner, you know, it's just, here's the paints, here's how you lay it down, here's the steps, this is what they mean by certain terminologies, and getting the terminologies down, like glazing, do you really know, need to know glazing as a beginner? It's not entirely necessary, so, you know, helping beginners with those initial things that they hear these really advanced concepts and things like that, just clearing all this kind of uh, minutia. I think, People make it way too complex. My phrase that plays is keep it simple, stupid. Think long, think wrong. Sometimes your first instincts are the best one. Go with your first instinct instead of second guessing yourself. I, I see that a lot with persons that are new to this. They say, oh, maybe I didn't do that right. Just take it to the end. Then you'll know if it's right or wrong. If you stop in the middle and start again, you'll never know was that right or wrong. Just keep going. I uh, just did it a week ago, and uh, luckily it was a Bloody Mary, and uh, I couldn't taste the paint. Once. I think that's all most people need. Oh man, I couldn't even be, I, I couldn't even begin to count. Uh, coffee, I, I'm a coffee drinker, and I've rinsed my coffee, my brush in my coffee many times, and then it's not until like you know, and of course back early on I was still guilty of you know. Uh, bringing my brush to a point in my mouth and boom, tastes like my coffee. And yeah, so many, many, many times I've, I have done it. I'm guilty of it and many, I couldn't even tell you. It's just, I probably poisoned myself at one point. I have cleaned my brush and my coffee lots. I have never drank my paint water. I always aim the handle of that coffee cup away from me so that if I'm, if I'm not thinking about it and I go to reach for it, my, my, my knuckles hit the hit the cup and I'm like, oh, that's my paint cup, okay. But, but when I have coffee sitting there, yeah, I'll rinse my brushes in that every time if it's too close. Weekly? <laughs> Less frequently now. Um, I have a very giant pickle jar that I now use. Uh, so it says Vlasic and it's filthy because there's paint scum on the outside. So I know I don't drink that. And then if I have a beverage, uh, it has a closed lid, so I can't dip my brush in there. Um, but it used to be frequently. <laughs> uh, that happens never, because I actually never clean my brushes. As a 2D artist by trade, I never clean my brush. I might have wiped it on a paper towel, so that's not an issue. Uh, I, have I have done both of those things zero times. Uh, my paint water is in a red Solo cup that I do not use for any other purpose, and I only drink out of soda out of this right here, so I can never confuse the two. Uh, that is my own critical thing. If you're a coffee drinker, and you use like a coffee cup for your paint water and a coffee cup for your drink, you're screwed. Get ready to drink some paint water. That's going to happen at some point in your life. But I've done plenty of other stupid things. Don't get me wrong. It's just I'm lucky enough to not have done that. You know, I did it accidentally at first, and I just do it on purpose. But, well, how many times? Like a, like a thousand? I didn't look like this when I started painting. <laughs> nice.
Should I like change positions every time you like no, come back not, to me? Like, nope. 